Ah, back on the scenery today, and it's going to be a biggie. Which is what you would expect for the penultimate video of the Chorus series. Let's do this! Hi guys! So we have reached the station end of the layout, and there's quite a bit to go on here. The station and the platform area, the railways up on a retaining wall, and loads of scenery around the edge. In fact, with the final episode focusing on the slate quarry area to the right of here, this is actually the last chance to do some real scenery work, which is lucky now as I've ran out of knock leaves. The first job, as you're probably expecting by now, is to alter the layout's edge to match the terrain. The material I've used for this is called Fomex, and it's used to produce signs for shops and the like. What I like about it is that it's soft enough to cut with a knife, which is really handy. I don't really have a particular shape in mind here, I'm just cutting off enough to form the landscape into a steep bank leading down from the railway. With the Fomex at a good enough height, I set to work maiming the foam. The weapon of choice is the old kitchen knife. I say old, I think it was quite new before I robbed it for this job. The technique I've developed while doing this is to have the knife leaning on the Fomex edge. This way the foam will join at the correct level. I'm also cutting down from the platform edge, and this will soon have a wall built for it. It's not a bad idea to cut off small parts at a time, instead of going full guns blazing. Remember, this is 176th scale, so accidentally cutting off an extra 15mm of foam would be over a metre in real life. The foam is looking much better now, but there's that big gap between the landscape and the Fomex edging, so I'll fill this as much as I can with scrap foam offcuts. The foam's quite flexible in thinner pieces, so it's easy to fill most of the gap up, and it's recycling waste, and it's keeping the layout lightweight. When you think about it, it's a brilliant idea. The gap can now be smoothed off and blended with the rest of the bank. I use a standard mix your own filler from the local DIY, because it's cheaper. This is mixed to a thick consistency, and has a few drops of brown paint added to tone it down. You can buy lightweight modelling filler, but it's really expensive, so I won't. With the gap filled in, and apply a thin coat over the whole bank. This not only tones down the yellow foam, but it gives a good solid base to apply the scenery onto later. This is the Will's Slate Walling Sheets. I'm going to hold it in place and mark platform level on the back of the sheet. And because the platform will have a short wall around the outside, I add a second line, and cut at that one. At this point you may have noticed my injured hand. Don't worry, this was iron related, not modelling related. I'm not an idiot, I do know how to iron safely. It fell on me. This first piece of wall can now be slightly bent to shape. Pre-bending a sheet will help minimise the strain when it's glued into place on the layout. I decided it might be useful to cut a slit into the filler for the wall to sit into. Not sure how that'll turn out. The next piece is ready to be cut, and this one will feature the edge of the platform wall. The two pieces can now be joined together. When I glue them together, I use a scrap piece of plastic card on the back for support. And for some reason I use super glue only here, but really liquid poly would have been ideal. There we go, nicely lined up. Ah see, liquid poly. You can see the line for the platform wall, so I glue the slate wall in to meet this pen line. I do add drops of super glue just to give an instant bond whilst the liquid poly does its thing. I say instant. Now the glue's set, you can see that the rear pieces need to be trimmed to shape. Here we have the edge of the platform wall, and as this is visible, I'm going to fill the end with modeler's filler. I think it was Humbrol, but I can't remember. And this will act to blend the two pieces together, disguising the gap. And when it's dry, I use a knife to cut slits into the end to join the slates together. This will hopefully make them look like single pieces, front and back. Once 
Whilst I'm on the job of filling gaps, I'll fill the gaps between the main pieces. It looks like quite a lot of mess for a very tiny gap, but it's something that I always notice on layouts and it really ruins the effect. I'm going to carry on this walling around the railway line, as it's up on a bank with a retaining wall holding it back. So here's another piece going on. It's quite nice to finally get rid of some offcuts of Plasticard. We modellers seem to keep these little pieces thinking they'll come in handy, which they hardly do. The fill is dry so I'll first file it back smooth with the slate faces. I'm using a file here but I imagine sandpaper would work just fine. My stabby tool is now brought out to scribe the mortar lines back into the filler. I have had viewers inquire about this tool and I still don't know where I got it from. It's a bit like a fat compass point. In fact I don't even need to describe it, you can see it right there. It's pointy. The wall is complete so it's time to glue it to the foam. I'm using copy decks here because I know that that doesn't eat the foam. So I apply it to the wall and push it into place. Copy Dex doesn't dry very fast, so I'll jab cocktail sticks down in front of the wall to hold it in place while it sets. Now I set this shot up purely to show my nice cat, but if you're here for the modelling business end of the footage, I'm using a hot glue gun to set the top of the wall in place, as the copy decks was taking too long and I was getting bored waiting. Cats always look comfortable when they're sleeping. I wish I was asleep. With the hot glue dry now, I'll pull out the cocktail sticks. The copy decks can continue to dry without the wall going anywhere. Before going further, the wall needs painting. If you would like to see the colours I use for this, check out my previous videos, as I watch them to know how to paint them. First is a coat of Humrol Grey Primer, and this helps the acrylic paints key to the slate sheets. The top coat is then applied, and this is Anita's Grey Acrylic. I'm actually running out of this colour, and I can't find it anywhere in the UK. Those of you in the US, please send me some, and we'll be mates. The individual slates are now picked out with some Deco Art Slate. Pick these out at random, and I try not to think too much about it as I'll end up with an organised pattern. After all that faff with the filler, you can still see the join in the wall in, so I'll grow something up that later. The other colour I've chosen for the individual slate is Miniature Paints Blue-Grey. This is a nice light colour, and it gives a nice contrast to the others. If you worry that it looks too bright at this point, it will get toned down soon. I also tend to use less of the blue-grey compared to the slate-grey, not sure why. The whole wall is now dry brushed with light antique white. It may look like I'm brushing up and down, but I'm only actually hitting the wall on the down strokes, and this helps highlight the slates from above. The final step for the wall is a black wash. Because I've painted the wall in acrylics, it's best to use an enamel wash, or vice versa, as it will minimise altering the previous work. It's finally time for the station built-in to get glued onto the layout. I use copy decks, again, and this will just help hold it in place. With the station in place, the foam landscape can be modified around it. Filler is also applied to fill in the gap below the station, where I took too much foam away before. I'm also using this thick filler mix to fill in the gap on the platform which was caused by the join of the two pieces of foam when I first built the layout. With all holes filled, ballast can now be applied. This is Woodland Scenic's medium grey ballast. And when it's down I use a soft brush to smooth it off. Though this looks too uniform for the railway itself, so I've brought in the ballast slash dirt mix that I made for the rest of the line.
The entire railway and platform is sprayed with isopropyl alcohol, which helps break the surface tension and allows the glue to penetrate the ballast mix. I'm using ballast bond again here, and this is generously applied over the ballast, making sure to not leave any gaps. You can see how generous I am with the glue. I'm very generous. Some would argue too generous, but when it's dry, it's solid. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this tiny area, so I've just applied ballast down the side of the station and topped it with the slate dust used to create the road. And this is soaked in ballast bond as well. The ballast still looks a little too uniform, so I'm dusting it with the slate dust. It makes sense that waste slate would be used on the railway anyway. I wanted to top the wall and I started making little slabs. But looking at prototype photos again, it looks like they would have just been capped with a smooth mix. So I'm using filler in the same way. This is applied with a smooth piece of plastic card to get a nice join to the wall itself. And when it's all on, I use a wet paintbrush just to smooth it off a bit. The fill is dry, so I'll file it smooth with a file. The topper can now be toned down a bit with an off-white. This is Stone Golem by Army Painters, and it has a slightly yellow tint, which I like. The ballast is pretty solid now, so I use my stabby tool to pick off any rogue stones that have glued to the rail sides. This is a vital step and it's required to minimise the stones interfering with stock running over the section. At this point I'm still not happy with the ballast in this area, so even more slate dust is brushed on. It looks better now. I can finally make a start on the scenery. So scenic spray glue is applied into the corner and a fine green flock is sprinkled over it. This is also added to the opposite side of the track. A bit more glue is applied once again and the polyfiber is popped down. This will form the base of shrubbery. Knock dark green leaf material is sprinkled over the polyfiber. And finally the light green leaf material goes on as well. Moving down onto the bank and to prepare the surface for texturing, neat PVA is plastered over the filler. and sieved Welsh graded dirt is dropped over the glue. Due to the slope, I catch the runoff dirt with the lid of the tub. That way it can not only be used again, but it stops it getting into my hamster's tiny lungs, who's rolling around in a ball on the floor. After another spray with the scenic glue, blended dead leaves are sprinkled over the dirt. I didn't really want to make any more woodland area, so I've opted to go for an overgrown shrubbery look. The type that would be difficult and slightly annoying to walk through. To do this, I went full on with the polyfiber. But whilst it's covering the entire area, it is all small separate pieces to give the illusion of separate plants. This all gets sprayed with the scenic glue and the knock leaf material sprinkled on. And yes, this is the area that used up the last of my knock leaves. This was applied in the same way as small shrubbery, with dark leaves first and a lighter dose on top. Before going any further, I wanted to check that the track's running well, so the track rubber is run over the line, and the train run. I didn't film it, but just assumed that it worked. I wanted to weather the line where the locomotive would sit at the station, 
so matte black acrylic is sprayed through the airbrush onto the line. It's very easy to overdo this, and I probably did, because I continued over the crossing as well, but there we go. I also wanted to add wet oil patches, so I've dabbed on ammo, engine oil and fuel between the rails. This is also added on the far end of the platform, as the train would have stopped on both directions to drop Quarrymen off. I've made some trees for the area, though this video is long enough, so if you want to see me make them, you can check out my other videos. The stabby tool is now used to pop a hole in the bank. And with a drop of PVA on the tree, they are planted. And that'll do for now. This end is a nice contrast to the other section of the layout, which is what I wanted. And it's really nice to see the train running along the retaining wall, something the old chorus did. And whilst there are less trees to force viewpoints on this end, there are still interesting angles to view the railway from. I get asked quite often if I'll be building coaches for this chorus layout, and no I won't. The railway is purely running as goods to and from the quarry, but the station's been put in for somewhere for quarrymen to hitch a lift from. Look, me and your mum have had a chat and we really think it would lift your mood by watching these videos. Cheers.